Welcome back on this Monday evening to the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. We haven't touched base on this video since our severe weather outbreak last Thursday night and early Friday morning. It was a late night for yours truly. I was live streaming until about 1.30 a.m. And this was a significant outbreak. Of course, we had uh, quite a few tornadoes across the region. One in our viewing area in Trumbull County around Bristolville. It ended up being a uh, rated an EF0 with winds around 85 miles per hour. Now, we had a lot of thunderstorm wind damage in our TV viewing area. We've had a lot of problems in Canfield over the last several days, around the fairgrounds and vicinity, with a lot of trees down. But uh, the uh, Weather Service only found tornado damage in this one area of Trumbull County. But as nearby as the Middlefield area over in Geauga County, there was an EF2 tornado, another EF2 over here in eastern Cuyahoga County, Right in Cleveland, there was an EF1, and yeah, all told, over a dozen reports of uh, confirmed tornadoes across northern Ohio and western PA. We don't have them all plotted up here, but these are most of the northern Ohio tornadoes that occurred Thursday evening into the overnight hours. All right, we're going to talk a lot about the tropics over the next couple of days. This won't have any impact on our weather, but our weather will be pretty quiet, so we'll be able to focus some on this. Now, the first thing we'll talk about is Franklin, which won't have an impact on the U.S., but it is a very impressive system. A uh, Category 4, perhaps it becomes a Category 5 before it starts to weaken again. But this is a, this is a fish storm, thankfully. Uh, not even a big threat to Bermuda. It looks like it'll go west of Bermuda, but yeah, what a presentation on the satellite this evening. This, uh, again, Cat 4, perhaps Cat 5 briefly. And then as it encounters the, war the uh, cooler waters of the northern Atlantic by the uh, tail end of the week, it'll start to weaken. And again, mostly a fish storm for Franklin. But Edalia, or Idalia, I think it's Edalia. Um, this is a bigger concern to the U.S., and it's specifically Florida. Um, it's on the verge of becoming a hurricane as of this recording, uh, with only a few more miles per hour to go on those uh, winds to reach Category 1 strength. Moving off to the north at 8 miles per hour, and it's about uh, 35 miles south-southwest of the western tip of Cuba right now. Now, this is on track to make landfall early Wednesday, probably right around sunrise, um, give or take, in the Big Bend area of Florida, so right in through here. Now, you know, a lot of times our eye is drawn to the center of the cone of uncertainty, but it's called a cone of uncertainty for a reason. It's also possible it makes a landfall over here or over here, but... The most likely scenario is down the middle, but it's not guaranteed to be down the middle. And so basically this is going to have big impacts on the west coast of Florida, especially from the Big Bend on south. Once you get up into the Panhandle, you're on the drier side of the storm and impacts will be less up there. Some gusty winds, but not nearly as much rain. The, uh, <coughs> pardon me, the storm surge will be, of course, where we have an onshore push of water. So basically from Tampa Bay on north is where this will be at its worst, and we could be looking at a storm surge up to... 9, 10, 11, 12 feet um, in some of these areas. Now, thankfully, this part of Florida is fairly sparsely populated. Um, fairly. Of course, there are people that live there, but not as many people live there as in other parts of the uh, Sunshine State. But nonetheless, the storm surge potential is pretty significant from Tampa on north. Here's one model depiction of the uh, wind gusts coming into Florida. Again, early Wednesday, right around daybreak. This probably makes landfall somewhere between, say, 4 and 7 or 8 a.m., out here um, with winds near that eye center, um, well over 100 miles per hour, and even some strong winds pushing into the Tampa Bay area. Notice up towards the Panhandle, Panama City, and a lot of the beach resorts up here. Uh, that'll be the better side of the storm to be on. Now, of course, it'll weaken heading over the Florida Peninsula, and its eventual impacts and track for the uh, Carolinas is still a little bit up in the air. Some of the modeling, like this particular run of this model, keeps it offshore long enough that it probably maintain some strength and is more of a problem for the Charleston area and perhaps up to Myrtle Beach as well. Some of the other modeling tracks it over land more and therefore uh, weakens the system quite a bit more. So there's a little bit to iron out there as far as impacts across Georgia and the Carolinas. But our confidence in the track over Florida is fairly high at this point. The intensity is a tough forecast. It may make landfall as uh, at least Category 3, uh, a major hurricane. Right now, the chance of hurricane force winds, 74 miles per hour or higher, mostly concentrated near the eye wall, of course, with lower percentages of hurricane force winds once you get down towards the more populated areas around Tampa, St. Pete. Uh, the rainfall will be pretty impressive with this. Now, this is just one run of one model, of course, but particularly in the Carolinas, where the system may slow down, and if it hugs the shore and maintains some strength, this could be a prolific rain producer for someone in eastern North and South Carolina, but surely the amounts are not going to be as advertised right here. This is just one run 
of one model, but double-digit rainfall totals somewhere across central and eastern and south and North Carolina look pretty likely. Back here at home, though, weather pretty quiet over the next several days. Really, we have one weather maker, weather maker, I should say, coming our way tomorrow night, Tuesday night. Very early Wednesday morning. Might be a shower or a sprinkle with that. Now, in the wake of that front, a deck of stratocumulus clouds may hang out for a good chunk of the day Wednesday. And there might be a sprinkle coming out of those, but the bigger story will be, hey, it kind of feels like autumn here on Wednesday. With the stratocumulus deck, we may have a hard time getting out of the 60s in some spots Wednesday afternoon. But that's just kind of a one-day deal. The clouds thin out by Wednesday night and hardly a cloud in the sky. And the forecast for Thursday and Friday, a couple of absolutely pristine-looking days coming our way at the end of the week. All right, so highs today, departure from average. Uh, very close to average here locally, but that is about to change, of course. I think the, the heat will become the story at the Canfield Fair this year. Um, doesn't look like any rain for the fair. It won't be like last year where we had a tornado in the vicinity. On the Sunday of the fair, we had four or five inches of rain in a good chunk of Mahoning County. On the Sunday of the Canfield Fair last year, we're not going to have that this year. In fact, I don't think it'll rain at all, aside from maybe a sprinkle on Wednesday. But notice our impacts here start going up in the temperature department by Saturday, Sunday, and Labor Day itself on Monday. Now, it won't be particularly humid, but it's going to get hot. We're going to be flirting with 90 at the end of the weekend and right into early next week. I think the few days beyond Labor Day will still be pretty hot. We could string together one of the hotter stretches of the entire summer from this weekend into the first half of next week. So I mentioned this on social media earlier today. If you haven't closed your pool yet, I wouldn't do it. I know it's, you know, on the on the you know list of it's on the honey do list, if you will, at this time of the year, as we flip the calendar from August to September, the kids are back in school, summer's winding down, that sort of thing. But uh, if you haven't closed it yet and you know you're gonna have some opportunities to uh, enjoy some time outdoors, uh, this weekend, great pool weekend coming up. Uh, some chilly nights middle of this week will cool down those water temperatures, but yeah, we're going to be flirting with 90 as far as the air temperatures go by the weekend and early next week. I'll do it for me tonight on Weather for Weather Geeks coming up Tuesday evening. We'll be tracking, of course, the system coming into Florida in less than 12 hours at that point. And we'll have an update on the uh, unfolding late season heats coming our way just in time for the Canfield Fair in 2023.